Well, hi guys, so today's podcast is uh, I'm really looking forward to. Um, I met Ian years and years and years ago, um, and I would just like to say one thing, thank you very much for doing this, Ian. Um, but we'll bring him straight in anyway. This is, um, he probably don't even remember this name, but he was known when I was around then, it was Ian the Hitman Harrison. at the time. Um, so anyway, first of all, hello Ian. I hope you're all right. You? I'm all right, mate, are you? Yeah, well, yeah, I've been better, but uh, I'm, getting, I'm getting better now. Well, I'm going to start with that. I was just going to say, how are you and how's things and, you know, what's the sort of future for you with sort of what you can do and what you can't do and things like that? I, uh, well, uh, for people that don't know, I had open heart surgery about two, well, December 7th. Um, it was a big shock to me. I didn't realise I had any issues with my heart, but it's a wake-up call and um, I survived it, luckily for me. Um, I've I don't think I'm going to, I think once I'm fully healed, I think I, I won't have any restrictions because I was never exactly a marathon runner. Uh, <laughs> I'm not I'm not going to be going on, a, you know, downhill skiing or anything. So <laughs> I don't think it, it'll really affect me um, long term. It's just, uh, I'm just on the recovery now. I'm walking and hopefully in, they've told me, they've told me actually 10 months before I can lift with my upper body, but I'm hoping it's going to be less than that. And then... Uh, I can put some weight back on because I've dropped like 35 pounds in ICU. Wow. Um, I had pneumonia and uh, it was touch and go for a, f- a few d- few weeks there, whether I was going to make it or not. Right. But, wow. uh, yeah, it's uh, it was a shock to the system, but uh, I think it was all down to stress, to be honest with you. Right. Uh, from 2009 to 2017, I had a lot of stress in my life and uh, I didn't eat the best. And uh, I think that was probably the cause of it. Right. Um, but I'm, I'm on the men now, so thanks for asking. That's the main thing, absolutely, that's the main thing. So if it's okay, Ian, what we'll do is, uh, now we've established that you're okay at least, uh, thank God, um, if we could just start basically where you started and how your career started with and the type of training and things that you did to get you, you know, where you got. Uh, well, I, I started, my, my sports background really started at a young age. My dad was a, a judo guy. He was like the third ever black belt in judo in England, and uh, he taught judo. So I, I started judo about, I think I'd have been about eight, eight or nine years old when I started judo. And I was naturally a skinny kid, I was like a rake, you know. Um, so my dad used to do like push ups and curls in his bedroom with a, he used to work in a mill. So he had a big weight on a, on a leather strap, he used to do curls with that, and he used to do push ups and sit ups. So, like, eight, nine years old, I'd go in the bedroom and side of my dad, because my dad, my dad was like Hercules to me, you know? Yeah. And uh, I used to do it all with him. I used to do push-ups with him, sit-ups with him. He got me a small weight on a, on a strap that I uh, I was curling, and uh, really all I did was biceps and chest. I didn't really know anything else. And then, at 15 years old, um, I saw Pumping Iron. Uh, typical, cliche kind of scenario, but I saw Pumping Iron. I was gobsmacked by it. Then I, I bought uh, my first ever Muscle and Fitness, and I'll never forget, he had Scott Wilson on the cover. Yeah. He had massive delts, and uh, I just completely freaked out about it. Um, I asked for a weight set for my 15th birthday, which my birthday is right near Christmas, so it was like Christmas and birthday combined. Um, and I got a weight set, and I started training out of my garage. I got a Joe Weider Gold's... Um, gold barbell set they were like gold plates i don't know if you remember them yeah 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 I got a bench and uh wall yeah and then yeah. I, I i had all my posters on wall from what i bought from uh there was a weed shop in keithley and i met a guy i can't remember his name oh there was a guy in keithley that ran this shop and he was a bodybuilder too so i came across like pictures of bodybuilders and then i went to see my first bodybuilding show at batley frontier club there was a guy called Greg DeFerro. His nickname was Rocky. Yeah. He looked like Sylvester Stallone. Yeah. And I went to see him and I was just in awe of him. I, I must have bugged him to death because I was stood next to him asking him how big he was when he was 15, how big he was when he was 16. And <laughs> so I wanted a, a benchmark to go by. Yeah. And uh, that was the start of it all, really. And I started training. I read Arnold Schwarzenegger's Encyclopedia of Bodybuilding, started training how he told me. Um, it worked for about six months and then I figured out I was too, I had such a fast metabolism, it didn't really work for me. Yeah. So I kind of found my own way of training. And then 
trained very heavy. I met a guy called uh, Carl Beaumont, uh, who was a Masters competitor. Um, he he kind of took me under his wing, and I used to go to like uh, Carnegie College, I think it was, and uh, a few different college gyms that he had access to. And he, he showed me a lot of stuff and got me into the, you know, splitting body parts up and, and going to failure and lifting heavy. And um, I took it to heart big time. And then at 17, I ended up blowing both my knees out. I, uh, I was squatting over 600 pounds for reps. I was training with a powerlifter at the time called Pete Lenton, uh, who was, was a former Australian powerlifting champion, but he was about five foot two. And I was, I was six foot and trying to do exactly what he did with his squats. And, I ended up uh, basically break that basically what it was called it was osteochondritis desiccans I'll never forget the name and the head of my femur when it went into my knee basically cracked and the bone came out and one day when I was squatting it got stuck in my knee so I, I, I went down for the squat and as I came up I couldn't straight, I couldn't straighten my leg oh, yeah. so I went to see a specialist um, a sur- an orthopedic surgeon he said this uh, the same thing was happening to my left knee, um, so they put me in hospital, St. James Hospital, they operated on both knees. I was in there for about three or four weeks, and then I was on crutches for three months, because they put what they did on my left leg, they took bone grafts off my shin, and they basically pinned, pinned the bone grafts into the head of my femur to try and keep this bone in there. Right. And that was like experimental surgery, and they, they don't put bone into knees now, they take bone out of knees. <laughs> uh, so they, it caused me a lot of problems but I managed to find a way around it I never squatted again I did hack squats and sissy squats and stuff like that and uh, it didn't really affect my leg development but I came back after that surgery um, at 18 years old I went to I won the junior Mr Britain in 88 and then I switched federations and went into the British Championships in 89 Yeah, I kind of fast forwarded there a bit didn't I <laughs> um, I, can, I can remember the pictures, you know, being in the magazines then, because um, you just look ridiculous for like an 18, 19 year old kid. That was the thing, where you were everywhere on front covers. And I went from nothing to being kind of notorious in in like one show. Yeah, you know, like I'd competed in a lot of shows as a 10 year old, 18 year old, and I, I, people kind of rated me, but I finally got my conditioning right at the Naba Junior Britain. Yeah. Um, and I, I went, walked away and won it and uh, after that I was I was guest posing I mean I couldn't believe it I went from a kid idolising bodybuilder to suddenly being a guest poser at all these shows yeah. and it was it was pretty incredible really I, I, had a, I, had a, I had a cool ride for a few years you know <laughs> and, that, and that year that I won the NABBA Junior Britain was the same year Dorian won the British Championships right. and got his pro card right. so really that time NABBA had the freakier bodybuilders compared yeah. to IFPP. Yeah. Um, and when Dorian came along, that kind of changed things. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to have a go at that. So I switched federations. Yeah. Um, and the following year, 89, I went into the British Championships, still as a junior. I was 20 years old. I'd have been 19 when I won the, the NABBA Britain. I was 20 when I went to the British. Um, and I ended up winning the heavyweight and the overall and got my pro card. I remember it, I remember it. One thing, <laughs> Who got second to you? Gary Taylor. Gary Taylor, that was it, wasn't it? Yeah, because he... Uh, he ended up winning World's Strongest Man afterwards. Yeah, I yeah. Yeah, I can remember But that. he got second to Dorian the year before. Then he yeah. got second to me, and I thought he, he, he threw towel in then, I think, and he went to Strongman. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. It, it was some, some good bodybuilders around then. Yeah, well, I can yeah, remember I had, a, I had a magazine, because I... I um, I remember reading, I can only remember bits of it now, but I can remember reading your diet in one of the magazines, you know, when you were when you were really sort of young, 18. And I, you can correct me now, but I'm pretty sure at one point you were eating like fish and chips for your lunch every day. Oh, yeah, well. Put weight on. I, 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 I mean, I, I was such a skinny kid with such a fast metabolism. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't eat clean and gain weight. Yeah. So, I mean, I literally, and that's what really projected me from being a regular bodybuilder to being a big lad. Yeah. I, I just realised that I had to eat, and I wasn't really a big eater when I was younger. No. I could go all day and not eat, I was, and I don't like that now, I, I'm not a big eater. No. But I started force feeding myself, I mean, to the point where, I mean, I used to work at the YEB, I, I, were, I did an apprenticeship at the YEB, so I used to work on underground cables, my brother did the same thing. So I used to go to work and I'd get fish and chips, but I'd get three cans of tuna and put them in it. 
<laughs> or, or, or I'd get a Cornish pasty and throw a chicken breast in it. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, I just adding protein to stuff. It's just I knew I, knew, I realized that it was protein that was going to make me grow. Did and, you? Uh, I also realized that I had such a fast metabolism. It didn't really matter. Yeah. At that age, what what I ate, I just needed the calories. Because you drank quite a bit of milk as well, didn't you? I think when I exposed. I used to drink full fat milk. I used to drink probably yeah. eight pints a day. Yeah. 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 I, I I went I went mad, mad on it. I mean, it was it was a lot of bodybuilders say milks and milks for babies. It's no good. Well, it worked for me. Yeah, absolutely. For me. I mean, to the point where at one point I was taking in 120 desiccated liver tablets a day. Uh, These yeah. big horse tablets that were like double strength desiccated liver. They were they were a bitch to swallow. <laughs> and I remember coming home from work one day, and I'd forgotten to take them this one I day. Remember this <laughs> um, so I'm sat there. I'd had I'd had my ice cream, which I had every night. I had my steak. I had my jacket potatoes, and I goes to bed. And I'm 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 working full time at YEB at this time. I'm I'm about seventeen, I think, maybe eighteen. Um, and I'm like, fucking hell, I forgot to take on my desk at liver. So I started one at a time. I couldn't take five at a time. One at a time. 120 of them. It took me about half an hour to get them down. <laughs> I, right as the last one hit my stomach, I, I sat bolt upright in bed and projectile vomited the whole thing across my bedroom. But I'm, I'm a young lad. I don't have a lot of money. I'm getting like 70 quid a week, you know, for, for working full time. So I got up and I started picking all these desk liver tablets out of my vomit. And my mum walked in the bedroom because she'd heard me throw up. And she sees me, pick, like, basically picking them out and taking them again. And they thought I were nuts. They were going to call a psychiatrist on me. But that, I, I tell that story a lot, not because I want to be an animal, but I, I understood the importance of protein at that time. Yeah. And but if, if I threw it up, then I couldn't grow that night. But not just that, Ian, but one as well, how bad you wanted it. Yeah, I know, I, I did. I was, I, was very, I was very driven, you know, yeah. hence the knee surgeries and... Yeah. Doing stuff like re-eating vomit, you know, it's not exactly the smartest thing to do. But yeah, because what when, there was there was a steak story as well, wasn't there? What were the one with the steak? When you're training or something, and then oh yeah, I've, I've I've thrown up millions of times during workouts. I mean, it it was a it was a pretty regular occurrence for me on leg day and back day. Nine times out of ten, I'd throw up. Yeah, and um, yeah, once I threw up a steak in in, my, in the gym. And uh, I'm like, I'm not wasting that, so I re it. <laughs> yeah. I don't recommend that to anybody yeah. who, who's listening well, to this. Yeah, it's what I want, it? You know, what your body needs, and if you haven't got a right lot of money, then, you know. Yeah, I, didn't have a, I didn't have a lot of money, you know, and uh, it's, I couldn't go afford to go and buy another steak, and it was perfectly intact, just a bit chewed. Just, so a, I, I, <laughs> just a quick one, Ian, before we carry on, because I ain't done that on any other podcast, and I said to George I wanted to do that. And I mean, I know things were a lot more limited back then, but... What was sort of your supplement routine from maybe when you started up to when you finished? I didn't really take a lot of supplements uh, no. in, as a pro, but yeah. as a when I was young, it was it was very simple. It was protein powder, yeah, um, and desiccated liver tablets. I, I yeah. used to inhale those things. Yeah, I remember. And that. I, I tried all the crazy stuff like the liquid liver. Remember the liquid liver yeah. back in the day? I remember. I mean, all that was like creosote, but we. We thought it'd make us grow, so we drank it. Hey, mate, people now go to me, they'll, they'll have a protein shake and they'll go, oh, it's not very nice, that. And I think, oh. wow. Go, I says, that is like a McDonald's milkshake compared to... Absolutely, it is. I mean, liquid liver was vile. Yeah. But you drink it because you thought it'd make you grow. Yeah, sure, I, I think, they remember, I remember, when I trained at Phoenix in Bradford, they had this thing, and it was like pituitary glands of sheep and shit, and it was all crushed up. It was, it was vile. Yeah. But we thought it'd make us grow, so I remember, and that made liquid liver feel like a protein shake. It, it was, it was fab, but you did it. And then yeah. after a while, I'm like, I don't think this is working really yeah. well. And it's, it's like, it made me ill, you know what I mean? So, did you take anything like multivitamins and minerals or anything like that? Yeah, I, yeah, I did take a multivitamin, and I used to like quadruple the dose. Yeah. Um, just to make sure you had everything, but that's really all I did. I didn't really, I wasn't really big on supplements. I was, I was big on food. So yeah. what, what was sort of your training programs like, Ian? I mean, I can remember sometimes to watch you work out sometimes when you're getting ready for Olympia and stuff. So I know it was very low volume, very high intensity at those, at those times when you were huge. So is that... A lot of drop sets. Yeah. A hell of a lot of drop sets. Yeah. Uh, four straps, negatives. Yeah. I did a lot of stretching, like at the end of a set of flies, I'd just hold them there. I'd yeah. just stretch and stretch. In fact, I got to the point where I get my training partner to lean on them. Yeah. Um, push on them, and if I did a set of chins and failed, I'd get my partner to like hang on my waist and 
Yeah. I, I, I was big on full range of motion. Yes. I never did half reps. Yeah. Um, it, really, it was a conventional routine. I mean, I trained each body part once a week, yeah. uh, generally speaking. Sometimes I'd try maybe doing arms twice a week because my arms needed more work. Yeah. Uh, but I never tried doing that on a big body part. No. Um, and I guess it was a combination of Arnold's kind of routine and Mike Mensah's routine. So it wasn't as high volume. I didn't do six exercises. I generally speaking, for chest, I do two exercises. Yeah. Um, a press, complete failure, and a fly, and I'd change the order of them. Yes. Uh, for back, it'd be chins uh, or pull downs and some kind of rowing motion. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I don't understand why guys now are into these uh, rack pulls, these uh, half deadlifts. Yeah. To me, that just makes your waist bigger. I don't, I don't, I don't believe in stuff like that. Yeah. Um, arms, it was conventional. I'd maybe do two exercises for triceps, usually one for biceps. Um, delts were a problem body part for me, so I used to. I, 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 it took me about nine years to figure out how to do a side lateral raise correctly. Yeah. To hit my side delt properly. Yeah. yeah. I, I just, I didn't. Certain body parts grow easy for you. Like my back and legs grew for me very, yeah. very not easily, but. When I hit them hard, the grew. Yeah. Uh, my delts, it was different. I, I, I'd, I'd, I'd instigate trap development or yeah. uh, more front delt than side delt. So it took me a while to get my, and that was form really, you know. Yeah. But again, I'd do a lot of drop sets for for delts. I'd I'd start on the dumbbell rack. You probably saw me do it. I'd start with maybe forties, and then I'd, I'd, as soon as I failed to complete failure, I'd go thirty fives, yeah, yeah. then thirties, then twenty fives, then twenties, yeah. yeah. and I'd go right down to five pound dumbbells until yeah. I couldn't lift them. Yeah. yeah, so it's very, very intense, mm -hmm. um, as intense as I could, um, without dying, basically. <laughs> you know? At one point, I think, when you were training at your gym, uh, Body Balance, then I think you were, didn't you used to train, get your shit, did you, you used to have a shake after training? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Me, immediately go, after training. You used to go to bed then? Yeah. Yeah, I thought you'd, I, I, could I, 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 had, I had a room upstairs, and I, I, I would literally, because the theory behind that is, when you sleep, you 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 your pituitary, well, your brain releases growth hormone yeah. uh, once you hit REM sleep. So I was trying every trick in the book to try and grow. Yeah. You know, so I'd have my shake, I'd have a piece of fruit uh, to help the, the protein go where it needed to. And then as soon as that settled down, I'd go and lie down for two hours. Then I'd get up and I'd work the gym the rest of the day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I can remember, I can remember that, that you used to finish and then go get into bed. Best yeah. thing to do if you can do it, isn't it, at the end it, of the day? Well, you know, that that's a beautiful thing. I mean, I, I, I'd, I'd left YEB. Um, in fact, the, the, the day I got my pro card, or the, the, as soon as I went back to, to work after my pro card, I basically left the YB um, and opened my own gym. I was 20 um, and I, I opened Body Balance and I lived there for yeah. about a year until I, I could afford an house. Yeah. But, uh, you know, I, I, I lived, eat and breathed it. It, yeah. was, it was all I wanted to do, you know, yeah. and I think to... To train that hard and to push yourself that hard, you've got to want it that bad. Absolutely, mate. Yeah, I totally agree with you. So what were your food like, Ian? So, like, when you were 18, how did it evolve up to, like, say, like, 95 when you were... Because I can remember talking to you once and you were off-season. Because you used to get big off-season, didn't you? A lot of yeah, people did, yeah. like, don't get big anymore. They say it doesn't work. And I can remember we had... You all remember, but we had a conversation once and you said to me, you said, these people that say getting big off-season don't work, you watch when I compete because every year you were that bit bigger. You know what I mean. And I think at one point we were about twenty-three stone. Yeah, yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got. The, the, the thing is, though, to, to me, it's it's really obvious. You know, in order to build muscle, you've got to be in calorie positive. Yeah. In order to lose fat, you've got to be calorie negative. Yeah. You can't walk forwards and backwards at the same time. No, no. You stand still. Yeah. So it's it, you know it was very obvious to me that I had to eat excess amount of calories yeah. and. Part of that is you're going to build, gain some fat. Yeah. And as long as I could see my abs from a distance with squinted eyes, yeah. all good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. So what was the food you during that? And just one quick thing as well. We Did you do any cardio off-season or pre-contest? Because I know your metabolism were like crazy, so... The, the, the best I ever looked was the 95 Olympia. And uh, Jeff Walton actually helped me get ready for that show. Right. And I didn't do a lick of cardio. No. I didn't do it. I didn't get on a treadmill once, and that's about best. I competed at the Olympia that year at 279. It was the best I'd ever looked, the biggest I'd ever been on yeah. stage. 
Well, I, I did cardio for some of my earlier shows, but I didn't. I very rarely did it in the off season. Yeah. Um, my food. When I was younger, when I was trying to put all my all my basic size on, I ate just a lot of food. Just like, like you say, fish and chips, ice cream, uh, steak. And people will be screaming at me for for saying that, but. When I had such a fast metabolism, I couldn't eat enough clean food. Yeah. If I'd have been eating fish and rice, I'd have had to have been sat at a table all day eating. Yeah, yeah. And I, you just can't do it. So as I got bigger and I got older, I obviously cleaned things up. And I would say it was, it was a typical bodybuilding diet. The only thing I did different is, like, um, I don't know if you remember, but years ago there was a Edwina Curry salmonella scare with eggs. Remember that? Yeah. I, I, I went to a local egg farmer. And you might have seen it on calendar actually, and they the, um, the worked out how many eggs I ate in a day, how many eggs I ate in a year. Now they had me pausing on the on this thing, right, right. Um, and I got free eggs for three years for that, <laughs> as many as I wanted really? for, do, for doing that that, that thing. Yeah. So I used to go to this egg farm in Tong near where I used to live, and um, I'd get boxes of egg. I mean, just big boxes of eggs. So one of one of the things I did actually to to gain a lot of weight. I couldn't get over 20 stone at one point. I, what was it? 280. So that'd be a bit more than 20 stone. I, 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 couldn't, I couldn't get over 280. Um, and it, this was kind of... I think I was already a pro, but I'd not competed as a pro at this time. And I just couldn't break this, this, this deadlock. So there's two times this happened. One at 280 and one at 300, where I couldn't, I couldn't break a certain body weight. But the 280, I ended up using whole eggs. I do 17 whole eggs yeah. with a cup and a half of oatmeal yeah. and sugar, loads of sugar. Yeah. And I'd have that meal like eight times a day because it were really easy to eat. Yeah. I just, I would just, I mean, that probably didn't do my heart a lot of good when I think back. <laughs> but oh, but that, I mean, this is in point. my teens, you know yeah. what I mean? So, yeah. I don't think it really affected me later in life. But yeah. um, And then another time the same thing happened was uh, I was sponsored by Kerry Case with uh, Chemical Nutrition, yeah. and I could not get over 300 pounds. So I ended up taking in 700 grams of protein a day. And uh, basically, I'd mix up a protein shake, which was 700 grams, in a in a, like a big flask with a little spout on the top, and I just sip it every 15 minutes. I'd have a sip of it. So I was doing, well, I don't know, 30 meals a day that were maybe. 15 to 20 grams of protein per meal. Wow. And then the only food I ate, I'd have my oatmeal and eggs for breakfast, and then I'd have whatever I wanted for my last meal. Like, I'd have a Chinese or something, or a, or a pizza, yeah. just for my head, you know? Yeah. And that broke me over 300 pounds. But there are two times that I've done extreme things. But generally speaking, I ate chicken. Uh, I'm never a big steak eater, never ate a lot of steak, and never really liked it. So it was chicken, uh, chicken and eggs, really. Yeah. Uh, I only really brought fish into my diet when I prepped, yeah. um, and, I, and usually when I started a diet, the first thing I'd cut out would be my chocolate, yeah. then I'd cut my fish and chips out, and then I had to get serious, then I'd start counting calories and counting yeah. macros, you know. Yeah. But, uh, a very simplistic way of doing it. Now, I mean, nowadays, I think they try and make it too Ooh. complicated, the diet. You know, I get so many people, they'll say, what are your macros? Mm -hmm. Or uh, when I train people, I do online coaching. I'll say, can you give me an example of your diet? Nine times out of 10, they'll say, I get 150 grams of protein, 150 grams of carbs, and 40 grams of fats. I'm like, no, 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 I want to know what you eat. Yeah. I want to know where that food, where those, where those macros come from. Yeah. Because that's very relevant. You know, not all carbs are equal. Not all proteins are equal. Oh. Not all fats are equal. Uh, so I, I think it was pretty much a conventional diet. I just... I had to go overboard on certain things because I had such a fast metabolism. So it wasn't easy for me to gain size, even though people think I was this crazy mass monster. It was. It was never easy for me to eat enough food to gain size. Yeah, in that way. Yeah. So I mean, back then Ian, as well, I can barely remember anybody eating egg whites. No, we did. We had eggs. We had whole eggs. I couldn't. Yeah. Like that. You we had the whole thing. I mean. Uh, we, we're Yorkshiremen, mate. We, we don't want to throw egg yolks away, do we? Oh, that's what hell. They break, break our heart. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Unless you're feeding them to the dog and you're getting some use out of them, but you don't want to throw food down the toilet. You know, it's just oh, it's, it's something we just won't do. So, so yeah, for, I mean, I used to eat the whole eggs. So for pre-contest, would you still eat, eat the whole eggs and things? But you no. Just, oh, no. no norm, normally, as soon as I got to my pre-contest, I'd cut 
all but one yolk out. So I might do 17 egg whites or 20 egg whites yeah, yeah. with one yolk. Yeah. And um, I'd probably do that for my breakfast. And then I'd do pre-contest, generally speaking, that's when I bring fish in. So yeah. my last meal of the day, and I do this with a lot of my clients, would be fish and avocado. And okay. usually it'd be salmon. Um, but I can't eat salmon now to save my life because I ate so much of it when I used to that diet. I can eat other fish, but still to this day, it's like a fat and a, a good fat like avocado yeah. and fish. And if I was struggling to lose weight, then I'd increase my fish and my egg whites and decrease my chicken. Um, steak, very rarely I used. I very rarely use steak at all. I know obviously you'll have eaten quite a lot of them off season, won't you? Did you I used to, yeah, I used to inhale carbs in the off season. Uh, I, I'd have bad carbs too, like refined sugar. Yeah. But once I got on my on my contest uh, prep, all the sugars would go, and yeah. it was basically oatmeal, uh, white potatoes, and rice. Yeah, they were they were my carb intakes. Generally speaking, I don't really think I took any other kind of carbs. Maybe some fruit. Maybe green apples were a big thing for me. Right. Okay. Uh, still love them to this day. I keep them in the fridge and slice them up. Yeah. 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 But green apples will be a really good, uh, they'd be a, a treat for me because they tasted nice, but there's not that much in them, you know. So other than changing the fats pre-contest, what did you do? Did you just bring the carbohydrates down periodically towards the show? I'd, I'd manipulate the carbs, basically. My protein would stay constant. Um, as I dropped weight, I'd, I'd allow my protein to come down slightly, but I always wanted to take in at least a gram per pound of body weight yes. that I wanted to be. Yes. Not that I was, you know. Um, yeah. And then I, I would manipulate my carbs. And yeah. I used to do a lot of carb cycling. So oh, cool. I, I, w I would do, you know, one day, I very rarely went below 350 grams of carbs a day. Yeah. But that was a kind of my standard. But yeah. then I would throw in a zero carb day. Um, yeah. I remember for a lot of my shows, I would do an egg white only day. But every meal was 20, 20 egg whites with nothing, right. with no yolks, no carbs. Right. And it, it, it used to melt fat off me, and I I do that to this day with some of my clients. It's yep. mind blowing, and you can't yep. do it more than one or two days in a row. Oh yeah, yeah. Um, it worked for me, you know. It, it definitely worked for me. Just a quick one, because while we're in this sort of pre-contest thing, because um, I've done this with most as well, because obviously people are going to be really interested with you with that. What did you do? Say your last week of the show, because a lot of people now. They try to manipulate everything in the world during that last week. So carbs come down, carbs go up, water goes up, water comes down, salt goes in, salt comes out. Did you do any of those types of things? I tried it all. Yeah. I, li I listened to what other people did, but yeah. I did um, the year I turned mm. pro, like two weeks before the British Championships, I did uh, the Bristol Grand Prix. Right. And there was a guy, I probably remember this guy, Phil Hill, remember him? Yeah, I do remember him, great bodybuilder, yeah, big guy. Wasn't Incredible it? bodybuilder. And, and I sat with him after that show and I picked his brain about sodium loading, carb loading, and he said, don't do it, don't do any of it. And basically, for that British, I didn't do any of it. <laughs> I, 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 I didn't sodium load, I, I just kept my sodium intake exactly the same all the way through. Yeah. Um, Generally speaking, I would carb deplete and carb load, but yes. not extremely. Um, I would carb deplete with my training. Yeah. So basically, at the beginning of the week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, um, I would do full full upper body workouts. I'd never train my legs the week before a show. Yeah, yeah. It's a blur definition. But I'd do full upper body workouts. So it'd be like a, it'd be like a circuit, like yeah. a set of chest, set of back, set of delts, set of biceps, set of tries. Yeah. And I'd just repeat that and go through until I'd, I'd literally drop. And yeah. the whole idea was to just deplete my muscles of carbs of stored yeah. glycogen. Yeah. But I wouldn't increase my carbs. So I was yeah. on relatively low carbs. I might be on maybe 200 grams of carbs a day and I keep them at that. Yeah. But I was depleting myself with the training. And yeah. then I would stop training from the Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Um, and I would just let my body naturally fill up. And I might increase my carbs. I might, I might do like a, a small potato every hour. You yeah. know? Uh, but generally speaking, my carb intake... It might, I, I might start the first day with like 600 grams, but then the second day I'd back off a bit, go to like 500 grams or 450. Yeah. And then the third day, generally speaking, what I, I learned to do for my body, and it works a lot well with most people I've worked with, is that very last day I would carry on carbing up until I saw myself spill over. Yeah. Once I spilled over, I would stop taking in carbs completely. I would stop my water intake completely, and I would switch to pure turkey breast. 
yep. um, which is a low sodium protein yeah. source. And basically by doing that with high doses of vitamin C, I would drop my water. Uh, the following day, I'd still be full for my two or three days carving up, whichever I decided to do. And um, I never used, I used diuretics for one show, my first, my pro debut, and it nearly killed me. I nearly died. Yeah. The Night of the Champions. Um, it was a horrific experience. I used Aldactone. Yeah. And um, I took advice off a bodybuilder um, that I probably shouldn't have, I should, probably shouldn't have took advice. Yeah, we've got everybody's different. <laughs> uh, I know it is. <laughs> what works for one person doesn't always work for another, and it, it nearly killed me. And um, so after that show, I never took diuretics ever again in my life. Right. And I'm a big, I'm a big advocate of not using diuretics because. So would, you, would your water change you, and would it increase over the week or anything before you stopped it, or would you just? Yeah, I used to do like um, two gallons. I, I used to increase it to about two gallons a day. Yeah. Uh, about ten days out from the show. Yeah. And I keep that ex that high volume of water right until I wouldn't change it until the day before the show when I saw myself spilling over and then I'd stop yeah. completely stop so and your body don't click on so your body's still expelling water but the carbs hold it in the muscle so you're yeah. losing it from under your skin so that's quick the theory one, quick one mate which I've not asked anybody else and I'm, I, I said to George the other day I want to ask this of you is then because people never talk about this what did you then do on the day of the competition as in, did you drink anything at all, or what did you eat during the day? And I would sip on on water, but only sip. I wouldn't I wouldn't drink. I'd wet my mouth. Yeah. Um, but basically, I used to wake up, and this was from Kerry. Kerry Kays gave me this advice. Yes. And it always worked for me. I'd have um, a steak the morning of the show. Yeah. Uh, but I never eat steak. But I'd have a big steak, maybe yeah. a sixteen ounce steak, okay. with a, a a jacket potato. Yeah. Absolutely loaded with unsalted butter. Yeah, yeah. So plenty of fats to fill it's you. It's called with. wheelbarrow. It was yeah. Dutch, uh, yeah. a, a sodium-free butter. Yeah. And that was my breakfast. And then I would basically snack on rice cakes, sodium-free rice cakes, and bananas uh, or apples okay. as, as the day went on. The yeah. bananas were from my potassium. Yeah. Um, I, I'd learned at a young age. A lot of bodybuilders back in our day, when we were younger, used to use slow K, remember? I do. Uh, but there were quite a few guys that had trouble with that. Uh, I remember going to a, a bodybuilder's funeral back in the day because he, he'd used some diuretics and some slow care. Uh, so I didn't use that anymore, but I used basically two bananas in a day or three bananas that give you enough potassium for what you needed. Yeah. So I, I would limit myself to probably three bananas a day for sure. And the rest of my carbs had come from the rice cakes because it's a dry, it's a dry carb. No, um, no protein after the steak. Then you enjoy it. I might put a little bit in, like a couple of ounces of turkey, just to settle yeah. my stomach. But yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I really didn't bother with protein the day for sure, to be honest with you. And what about um, the things that people do now, where they might have a glass of like dry white wine night before the show to all dry out and things? Uh, yeah, I actually I did. I used to do a glass of dry white wine the night before the show. Yeah. How, how much that helped me, I don't know. Yeah. Um, I agree with that. Yeah. I, I I did that, and we we used always used to do a thing called uh, glycerin. Yeah. <laughs> the glycerin. Do you remember glycerin? Yeah. I've used that old person. Have you? Yeah. I, I we, we, yeah. Kerry put me onto that too. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. Very sweet, re weird tasting stuff, and I put it in a black coffee. Yeah. Uh, I'd have that the night before the show. Yeah. 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 Um, and high doses of vitamin C, people underestimate vitamin C. Yeah, yeah. I go up to 16 grams a day. Yeah, it does work very well. It does work very well. Healthy way to do it, too. Yeah, so what about, uh, just the last point on that, what about then backstage? Did you do any of the crazy stuff where people eat sweets and chocolate while you're pumping up and any alcohol backstage or nothing like that? Not really. The first ever show I did when I was 15, uh, Cal Bowman had me drinking, um, it was like hot tea with whiskey in it. Yeah. Uh, I walked on stage and I was pissed out of my brains. I couldn't see a damn thing. So I never did that again. I did the drive out one the night before, but the day of the show, I just, yeah. I want to keep my wits about me. I've never been a drinker. I don't like alcohol, really. So backstage, we're just pumping up. You didn't eat anything off. Yeah, it? just pumping up. And, yeah. and, and then I'd drink water. Once I start pumping up, then I'd, yeah. if I needed water, then I'd drink because it's yeah. too late then. It's not yeah. going to affect you. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Well, when were that, Ian? I, I could be wrong here. I could get the guy's name wrong. So massive apologies if I do. But you had a video out once when I were a kid. Because I used to watch that and with the city squats on. And I think he was called Alan Guest. Yes, he used to own a gym in Halifax. Alan yeah. Guest, he lives in France now. That's where I first saw you do the city squats with the leg yeah. extensions. When was that? That was right after I got my pro card, so I'd have been oh, 20. Right. Yeah, I'd just won the British. Um, 
and he, like after I got my pro card, I didn't compete for four four years, right? Because I knew I was a kid. I was twenty year old. Yeah. You know, I knew I needed to put size on and to compete and be competitive as a pro. Yeah. So yeah, I was training with Alan. Um, who else did I train with? I, I had some good training partners back in the day. Tony Brown, trained with Tony Brown. Yeah. Um, be a guy called Andrew Beresford, who, who was from Dan Works up where. Yeah. He was probably the best training partner I ever had. He was right. an animal. He right. was like a war going into the gym with him. <laughs> who was going to give up first, you know? Yeah. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, yeah I, I had some. That, that video was comical because, if I remember rightly, it started with a Mickey Mouse clock at the beginning and me, me putting it. Turning yeah. it off and going running on a morning. I never went running. It was all bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> the rest of it was true, but I the never went running. Was good, though. No. It was a good training video because there was no crap on it. It was just you working out. You know what? Oh, it, it was. It was honest. Yeah. Apart from the running bit, it was. It was exactly what I did. Yeah. You know. Um, I cringe when I watch it now. I, 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 I've seen a couple of snippets on it on YouTube, um, but it's. Uh, it, it, it was honest. It was what I did. What is it called? The video? Do you know? Because I can't, I, I had a quick look for it on YouTube, but I couldn't find it. There's some, there's, there is some clips of it on YouTube. Is there? Uh, the, the, I think I saw one the other day. There's, I'm doing flies or chest press on it with Alan Guest, and I, I like he's that. got like a pink vest on or something. I used to love that because I used to watch that and then I'd go train because it was just things like that. I've always loved the realism, me. Yeah. You know, you know when they've got spray on them and all that, and they're walking well, in. That's that's why I wanted to do it because yeah. I wanted to be, I wanted it to be just me training. Yeah. And explaining what I did and why I did it, you know. And uh, when I look at it now, it's like my, my training did evolve from that. You know, yeah. I, I, I got um, I got a bit more technical with my training as I, as I got bigger and older. And yeah. the, the risk of it, I mean, your risk of injury goes up as you get stronger. So, you, you know. I mean, you you lifted some massive poundages, but I can remember when I trained at Body Balance and you were training in there, you were getting ready for an Olympia once. And your form didn't waver on most things then. It wasn't about... So I'm going to say to you, what was your... I know you love to be strong, but the obsession now is progressive overload continuously, almost over everything else. And I just wondered when you went in, what, what were your sort of mental process? Was it about getting an extra rep or what is it about getting your head in that muscle as much as you could? Yeah, it was all about getting the muscle to fail, mate. It's not... Yeah. It's a, I, I always, I, one of my biggest sayings is um, the muscle can't count. Yeah. The muscle has no idea how much weight's on the bar. Yeah. Yeah. All it knows is failure. If you yeah. make the muscle fail, it'll grow. Yeah. And uh, too many people worry about lifting big weights. And I've said that. Yeah. What you've said. It, that. I got strong, but I didn't set out to get strong. Yeah. That sounds stupid. Yeah. I set out to get big. Yeah. Um, and for instance, you get a lot of guys they'll chest press, and when when they come at the top, they'll cave in. The shoulders yeah. come up. Yeah. You know? But I always made sure I bridged. And got yeah. a maximum contraction. Yeah. And when you do, if, if you get guys that like throw weights around or use momentum, um, when you get them to eliminate that inertia, eliminate that momentum, and push away from a dead weight, you do it. You you do exactly this. I've I've seen you train. I've seen what you do. Yeah. It's all about you know you don't want to boom, boom. You want to stop. Ten times push harder. a dead weight because then yeah. it's muscle doing the doing and the you lifting. Can't, you can't use anywhere near as much weight, and a lot of people can't take that. You, you can't short term, but Long if you term. start training like that, Ooh. then suddenly you'll be ridiculously strong. Yeah. Because yeah. what happens usually, like on a, for, for with chest, for instance, and you know this because this is exactly what you say. This is exactly yeah. how you train. Yeah. Um, nine times out of ten, people involve in front delt and tricep when they do chest. Yeah, yeah. If you eliminate that, initially you'll be weaker. But yeah. the chest potentially is a much bigger, stronger muscle than your front delt. Absolutely. They're the weak link. Your front delt and your tricep are the weak link in that exercise. Yeah. So if you eliminate that, you're eventually going to get much stronger than you could ever have been because you don't have that weak link stopping the, the set. You know, like and that's I, how I got strong. Yeah, it's like if I train, I have a, I do have a kind of logbook thing that I'll have a look at before I train, but it's not about that. I have to go in and get a rep more than last time. I've done that before, but the yeah, problem that's how you get injured. Yeah, and, and, and the problem with that, Ian, is you can be a rep stronger, but are you a rep stronger because what your form exactly like it was before? Exactly. You know what I mean? It almost becomes... Bouncing it up to say you did one more. You know, just to get that extra rep. And it's yeah. not... We're bodybuilders at the end of the day. It's not about that. Exactly. You know, we're not powerlifters. We're bodybuilders. And we're not I mean, I got strong. I mean, I used to oh, stiff I mean, like yeah. deadlift. Remember, ridiculous. Six weight. plates aside. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I used to ridiculous weights. Um, but there were certain exercises I was just strong on. Yeah, you know, I, I was strong on my chins. 
I was strong on RDLs, stiff, I was stiff like a deadlifts. Yeah. Um, but like I, I see guys now, they were stiff like a deadlifts so. though. Don't, yeah. don't, don't it tickle you now when you watch people go on doing a stiff like deadlift and you go really? <laughs> well, I, I never did a stiff like deadlift off the floor. I did them on a bench. Yeah. And uh, I, I used to do it so that I took the bar past my toes. Yeah, you know, I, I always didn't like that. And yeah. so when I see people do it with an Olympic bar and 45s and off the floor, I'm like, you're starting six inches up. Yeah. I used to go two inches below. <laughs> you know, it's it's very different. It's very it, different. It, it, um, it absolutely is, mate. But I'm glad you've said that. Because like I say, I think that there's an obsession suddenly now of I have to get stronger all the time. But... You know, I said to someone last week, uh, just like you've said, you might, the better your form gets, a set might take you 10 seconds longer than it did the week before. Your reps are still the same, but you're stronger. You know, it's time under tension, isn't absolutely, it? Absolutely, you don't think about that. So, so I, the, I, I think I, I evolved that. The bigger I got, the more I realised. And I think it was probably because as I got really strong on certain movements, like I, I've got a picture somewhere of me doing 190 pound dumbbells for incline flies. Yeah, and that were after I'd retired when I was wrestling. Yeah, um, but I, I got I got very strong on certain movements, yeah. and I realised that if I started bouncing those weights around, I was yeah. going to tear something. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So it, it, the the bigger and stronger I got, the more important my form was. Yeah, and that's why you when you saw me getting ready for the Olympia, by that time I, I knew that a, an injury was around the corner if I didn't do it perfectly right. Yeah, you know. Yeah. So. Absolutely. Yeah. It, it, yeah. The killer question <laughs> of when you started taking something, you know, when you thought that was required and necessary, where you started and where you sort of built up to for towards, say, your last Olympia in 95. The first time I ever took anything was right, was leading up to the NABBA Junior Britain. I'd oh. never taken anything until that point. Right. Uh, I'd had my knee surgery at 17, which put me out for yeah. a year. Yeah. Um, and then I came back and I was... 18, I'd have, I'd have been back end of 18, nearly 19, the first time I ever took anything. Right. Okay. Um, and it was very, very complicated. It was Dianabol. Yeah. <laughs> I think mean, everybody did, didn't they? Dianabol tablets. Yeah, yeah, first thing I ever took. And I, it, that was leading up to the Nava Junior Britain. And that's yeah. all I used for that show. Right. And then uh, the following year for the British Championships, I think that's when I'd, I'd probably used... I honestly can't remember. I've got, I've got, I actually got diaries of every show I ever did. Right. Um, and I've got every single drug I ever took, right. and, and every workout and every meal written down in these diaries. Um, I, I, I said I was going to write a book one day, but I'm probably not. <laughs> um, <laughs> but yeah, yeah. I mean, I, I think for that show, I can't remember what I took, but I always, I remember, I actually remember being backstage uh, in the parking lot at the Junior Mister Universe. Because I won the Junior Britain, then I won the Junior Universe in Naba. And that was back end of the year. I think it was like September, October or something. I remember being in the parking lot. And I won't mention the names, but I was with three bodybuilders that were well-known, very well-known bodybuilders. In fact, Andy Ormby was one of them. All right. And they rest in peace. Yeah. Um, what well, there was two what? other bodybuilders there. And we were talking. They asked me about gear, what I took. Mm-hmm. And I was with my brother, my Neil, and... I sat there and I told them exactly what I took, and they started laughing at me. They were they were, they were taking the piss out of me. Yeah. That's what I took in a week. They took in a day. Wow. Okay. Um, so yeah. I I was always I was scared of it to be honest with you. Yeah. Just yeah. like you, I'd spoke to my dad about it. Yeah. Um, my initial goal when I first started bodybuilding was to be the first Mr. Olympia to never take steroids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Soon yeah. realised that wasn't yeah. possible. Yeah. Um, but when I did it, I did a lot of research on it. Um, and I always did the minimum amount I could. And I think luckily for me, I've got the sort of body that responds drastically to any drug. Right. Um, it doesn't matter what it is. I, 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 I don't need big doses of anything. No. Um, so I think maybe the first year doing the Britain, I maybe did the traditional, you know, 10, 12 week cycles. But then after that and throughout my whole pro career, I always did short cycles with fast acting stuff. Yeah, and six weeks on, three to four weeks off, yeah. and I never changed it. And no. then after a show, I'd take probably eight to ten weeks off, and yeah. I would take at least a month off training after every big show that I did. Yeah. Let your body uh, because most people, I think, injure themselves when the body fat's really low. Yeah. 
yeah. go back in the gym, they're full of food and they're super strong and yeah. they end up hurting themselves. So I always tried to think about what I was doing and I, I knew when to put my foot on the gas. Yeah. And uh, I retired at 20, how old were I? It was 98. So I'd have been 28 year old when I retired. Yeah. And, uh, I haven't taken anything since. No. I've never taken a damn thing since. Even no. when I wrestled, I never took anything because I figured I'd roll the dice enough. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Um, but I, I, I did what I had to do, um, but I, I, I'd always use the minimum amount because it always scared me, to be honest with you. I can remember when we spoke before, I think, didn't you used to do things like you'd maybe do a couple of weeks on a slightly long acting and then change? That's exactly how I did it, yeah. I'd, generally speaking, I'd do first two weeks of my six-week cycle on uh, longer acting stuff, uh, yeah. Sustan on, Deck or something like that. Uh, I, I can't remember any of the other products that I used, but generally that. Yeah. And then I would go on to fast acting, like propionate, stuff that was in and out in two or three days. Yeah. Theory was the long acting would be out by the end of the six weeks, it'd be gone. Um, my short acting would be out within a few days. Yeah. And that, therefore, I didn't need to use HCG or Clomid. I didn't, I didn't need to kickstart my body back in, it do it itself. Uh, and I'd feel it happen. You know, what, and it was. What about these people now, Ian, that just don't come off? You know, <laughs> I, I met a guy a few years ago, he'd been on gear for 35 years. Yeah, it's great. Without a break. Yeah. I mean, you kind of screwed at that point. You've got to take it because yeah. you, your own production is going to be on its ass. But yeah. luckily for me, touch wood, I've never had an issue yeah. from anything I ever took. Yeah. Uh, I know my heart issue that I recently had was nothing to do with it because yeah. I was in my 20s and I'm in my 50s now. Yeah. Um, but um, I, I think, like I said to you before, I think there's use and abuse. Yeah. I think it's... Uh, it's um, it's, it's unfortunate that they have to be used, but performance enhancing drugs are used by a lot of people nowadays. And I mean, there's these clinics all over with, I do have low testosterone. There's yeah. most 40, 50 year old men who've got money are using some kind of testosterone nowadays, which yeah. never happened when we were young. No. It was on athletes that really went, yeah. went that route. Yeah. Um, but I, 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 again, I just think it's, if you're smart and you, you take the minimum amount you can, yeah. you take the maximum amount of time off, yeah, uh, know your half lives, know how they work. Yeah, because uh, a lot of people think if they're not jabbing themselves, they're off. Well, if you were yeah. taking a long acting steroid for three months, you have a build up of that in your body. Yeah, you, that's going to be in your body for months. I remember when the Drew, Drew set of the Mr. Olympia in Rimini, yeah, uh, in Italy. Yeah, and man. Samir Banu, uh, Barry Demir, they all got popped for uh, yeah. for Decker. Yeah, they all got popped for Decker, yeah. and they all said. I want on it. I didn't take it for over a year and a half. Yeah. Well, because they've been taking it for so long, they still had it. Yeah. And as they're dropping the fat, it's, yeah. it stores in the fat cells, so the, the, it's getting released into the bloodstream. You know, I learned a lot by studying and talking to people. What about GH and insulin Ian, that would have started around that time? Uh, insulin scared the crap out of me. Never did it. Um, GH. The first time I used GH was my first pro show. Um, and I responded ridiculously to it. I, I remember, I remember, I, I put two pound a day on for nine days, and I was about six weeks out from a show. I was already in condition, right. completely changed my physique. Right. Um, but I didn't use it every show because I couldn't afford it. Yeah. You know? right. I, I literally couldn't afford it, so I did not use it for every pro show. Yeah. And I think the best results I got off it was the first time I did it. And would you and, want? Uh, Pre-contest, if you could afford it. I could only do it pre-contest. I, yeah. I did try it once in the off-season when I had some money. Yeah. And it, I actually lost weight on it. Ah, okay, right. I couldn't eat enough food. Yeah. And even with the high-calorie stuff I was eating, I couldn't eat enough food, so it didn't work for me in the off-season. Right, right. Uh, but um, I, 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 I did a lot of research, talked to a lot of people. I mean, I remember Lou Frigno when did the Olympia one year, and he was doing 36 IUs a day. Yeah, I've heard them so much. Yeah. You know, I, I, I experimented with a few different doses, going down to two and going up to like eight. Yeah. Four I use, uh, four I use a day on training days is what I did. So yeah. I did four I use four times a week. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I did that probably six weeks out from a show if I had the money. Yeah. Uh, and that, that's that's about as much as I delved into it. A great, a great compound. Yeah. You can afford it. I mean, your oh. side effects to it if you take sensible doses are, are minimal. We yeah. use it as a, an anti-aging drug now, don't they? You know them, uh, they do, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Just a quick one on your training, just to go back to it, which I forgot. Did you cycle training ever? So did you do, say, maybe 
Because like anybody, you tend to, when you're training high intensity particularly, you tend to get fatigued, accumulative fatigue sort of in road over a period of weeks. Did you do periods where you kind of blasted it? And I did, but I didn't plan it. You know, yeah. like powerlifters will plan it. They'll be, I'm doing two weeks where I'm going light, and then yeah. they'll start to build. I didn't do it that way. I did it by how my body felt. Okay. So if I felt worn out or I felt like a, my chest was super tight, yeah. I'd back off the weight and I'd do more of a volume workout. Yeah. But most of it was instinctive on how I felt, you know. Yeah. If I felt like an injury could happen, if I felt like my lower back was bothering me, I'd do maybe all chins that workout rather than doing my rows. Um, right. But most of it was instinctive. If I felt strong, I lifted heavy. If I, if I didn't feel strong, I'd go more, slightly more volume, okay. um, maybe less force reps or just slow down my reps. You know, it's, uh, yeah. honestly, when I've seen you train, it's basically what you do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, fair enough. So, just a quick one then after that. What, what When did you decide, because I can remember that, but when did you decide then to go into the wrestling? What? How did that come about? Well, my last show was the 98 Arnold Classic, and uh, I was kind of pissed off with the politics in, in bodybuilding at that time. It got to the point where you could show me a lineup that I was competing in, and I could tell you exactly where I was going to play. It didn't matter how I looked. So, I, 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 got, I got fed up of it, and... I remember getting off the plane in Columbus, Ohio, and my, my wife, Jane, was beside herself. She was crying her eyes out, and I'm like, what's wrong? She said, I can't do this anymore. Because she, she saw how pissed off I got if I didn't place where I thought I should have placed. Uh, so I promised her there and then, like, if I didn't place in the top five, with top five of the Arnold Classic, I used to qualify for the Olympia. Yeah. I said, if I didn't place in the top five that year, I'd retire. I got sixth, so right. I retired. Right. Um, and then I'm there, 320 pound or whatever, and I'm like, now what the hell am I going to do? Yeah. Uh, and I knew, I knew, I knew several wrestlers. A guy called Drew McDonald used to train at my gym. Uh, Darren Ward used to train at my gym. Yeah. Uh, so I had a few wrestlers that trained there, and uh, they said, well, why don't you come and wrestle? Yeah. Well, I'd done judo as a kid, so I knew how to take a bump. I knew how to fall. Yeah. Uh, so I started doing amateur wrestling. I went. Uh, Travelled all over the country, travelling to Ireland, uh, Scotland, all over the place. Yeah. And uh, didn't get paid nothing, really. But I, I knew I was moving to the US. By that time, I knew I was going to move here. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe, I, maybe I can make a break into WWE. And, yeah. And, you know, it, it wasn't really a career I'd looked for, but I, I already had the gimmick. I already, I already looked the part, so I'm like, might as well take advantage of it. Yeah. Um, and I, I enjoyed it. It was it was fun. I met a lot of interesting characters, you know. Um, it was funny because I, I wrestled in in the UK uh, with a lot of guys doing like uh, pretending to be Kane or pretending to be the Road Warriors or pretending to be the Rock. And then I moved over here, and then I'm actually wrestling with the Road Warriors yeah. and the Undertaker. And yeah. I never wrestled uh, the Rock, but. Uh, I actually was there, ended up wrestling with a lot of those guys, like yeah, Randy Roddy Piper, who trained me for a while, and um, I travelled to Puerto Rico um, regularly, like as often as I used to go to Ireland with yeah. Bushwhacker Luke and Roddy Piper and the uh, Nasty <laughs> Boys. And really good friends, weren't you, with the, um, what it, the Road Warriors or someone? I know you had a really good relationship. Mike, yeah, the crazy one out of the two, Mike Hegstrand, Hawk. Yeah. Uh, he was like my best best friend. Yeah. When I first moved here, the first Christmas we were here in, in Florida, I had no money because we'd moved to California first, then we moved to Florida. And I basically spent all my money. And uh, he gave me money to buy my kids' Christmas presents and he would never take it back. Wow. Uh, he was a super, super nice guy. I mean, just a, just an incredible guy. And he died of a heart attack in his late 40s. Yeah. yeah. I know uh, we came over his funeral. And that's when I. It wasn't long before that. So we had the conversation when we went for the meal before. Yeah. That. Say, yeah, and uh, um, when I went to his funeral, I decided that was it. I was done with wrestling. It was yeah. I'd gone from a crazy world of bodybuilding to the even crazier world of wrestling because yeah. the wrestlers were just nuts. I mean, oh, absolutely yeah. mental. Yeah, uh, yeah. Kurt Hennig. I don't remember Kurt Hennig, but he was a great wrestler. He used to come out with a Stetson on, going rap his crap. Right. <laughs> 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 that had got a lot of heat now, <laughs> but. Uh, I, I was supposed to main event with him at a sh uh, wrestling uh, show here in Florida. Yeah. And I went into the locker room and he, he died the night before. My God. Yeah, uh, he'd it, it been taking cocaine and some muscle relaxers and overdosed and died. And so, I, I think mean, in one year I went to nine funerals. Wow. Because, I mean, I met um, Drew 
that you were on about Drew because he would have he, he would have Drew was a character man. Drew was crazy. I, I love Drew to death. But yeah, he, was, he was a nutcase. He used to talk to me about the stuff that they used to take. Oh, I mean, I mean, I remember being backstage in Green Bay and Kurt Henny came up to me. And he had a bottle and it's, it was A to Z, the vitamins A to Z. And he said, "Do you want do you want any vitamins?" And they were just pain pills, yeah, uh, uppers, downers. And I'm like, "No, nah, you're good." Yeah, I remember Drew. I never got into it. I never got into that shit. I just remember Drew saying, to, "I get it," because he said you were on road so much. Oh yeah, I mean, the guys and you know, getting slammed on a mat, it's gonna, it's gonna take its soul, isn't it? Eventually. Oh yeah, they, they got beat up. I mean, you can't defy gravity as much as you yeah. choreograph a wrestling gig. If someone hits you over head with a fire extinguisher, it hurts. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, if yeah. someone throws you twelve foot and you land on 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 floor, it hurts. No matter how you land, it's gonna hurt. Yeah, uh, it, it yeah. beats you up. I mean, I, I know it's wrestling, but it's not in that in wheelchairs. They can't walk, and they, they never really made a, a massive amount of money out of the sport. You know, yeah. it's, uh, my wife would never come and see me. She hated it. Really? She would never come and watch me. I take my daughter to a lot of the, the events. She loved it. You know, Do you know kid. what? I'll tell you. I'll tell you a quick story. I came and watched you wrestle at Harriger. You know, the, the, there's a place in Harriger, and I brought. Um, We'd, I'd seen you about a week before and you said, I'm wrestling at Harrogate. So I said, I'm going to come because my nephew now, Jack, who's a professional footballer, believe it or not, he, he was so into the wrestling at the time. And I said, let's go see Ian because he's huge in that and you'll love it. And I were really heavy when I came to see you. Well, for me, I was. And then um, when I came to see you, I would about, I was a good 19 stone at least. So and we I tried to get you to get in ring, right? They asked me to. The, yeah. again, again, <laughs> Any big lads, we would. And he said, um, can I have a quick word with you? And he started talking to me. And I, I just just went, I says, oh, I know Ian, you know, a, a, a little bit. And uh, da, da, da. and he went, um, how would you like to sign for us and, and wrestle? And he said, I can give you two choices because of your size. And I, I'm like there with my mouth open thinking, this is a wind-up list. So he's, and he went, he says, he says, you can either grow your hair and be Triple H or you can shave it off and be Stone Cold Steve Austin. They all, <laughs> they all had a sort of a thing, didn't they, that they were copying people. Oh, yeah, copying them, oh, yeah. And um, he offered me, I think it was to go to Liverpool and do the training, because he said, you need to see whether it's for you, which is not everybody likes being slammed on the back. And, and I took the thing, but I never went, but I, I can just remember that night. We really... Yeah, it that would have probably been all right. Was it an old guy with a, with a beard? Yes. Yeah. yeah, that's Auric. He's he, he's passed away now, but yeah, he was a character. Yeah, he was a real character. Exactly. He, he wanted me to do a um, like a, a copycat thing, and yeah. I refused. I said, yeah. I ain't doing it. Yeah. I, I used to wrestle as Mister USA, but I just never spoke. Yeah. So if I got a microphone, they'd have sussed me out straight away, yeah. wouldn't they? <laughs> <laughs> well, big still then. I mean, you, yeah, still but, you know, the funny thing is, I, I wasn't taking anything then. That was just the size I'd got from my bodybuilding. Yeah, but I mean, you were still a big guy then. I mean, you looked impressive compared to everybody else. So, you know, very impressive. Yeah, it, was, it was fun. It was fun. It was uh, hard on the body. I ended up with a few. I remember when I, um, I ended up in hospital with a, an infection in my elbow from traveling Ireland. Because when you landed, you, your elbows had what's called bag up. They get massive water yeah, on them. And, uh, I'm in Ireland, so I'm like, I'm not going to a doctor here. There's no way. Yeah. You know, so I used to drain my own elbows. I used oh. to stick a needle in and drain my elbows. <laughs> and I, 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 I got an infection in it once. And I ended up in hospital um, getting, getting my eye to get the, the bursa sac got infected on my elbow. But yeah. I think the thing is, mate, I don't think people realize how big like people like yourself and that were. People go on about big guys now, but I mean, I've seen them now. The heavy. They're not muscularly big like you guys, you know, back then. They're just different like, look, isn't it? It's yeah. definitely a different look nowadays. I mean, I went so I went to a show once, and I did this with John Hodgson last week, and I'll get the show wrong, but I'm pretty sure we were at Chesterfield, and you you came, and we had I'd met you a couple of times then. Me and our Alan were there, and we had a couple of spare seats on our table, and you saw us as you came in, so you came. Because I actually, I could tell you a quick embarrassing story now that's popped in my head. You won't like that one, but I can remember. And I saw you two days later at your gym. I don't know if you remember. Can you remember the night of the um, New Year's Eve night when you were up on a bar and you stripped off on bar with Oh, God, bar? yes, I do. Oh, yes, I do. Mate, you were devastated over that two days later. I saw you. Yeah, I know, I know. 
you should have pulled me down off there. I'm a paralytic. And he, he literally got on and dropped to his pad. And said, you were massive, though. That was everybody was just the whole bloody nightclub stops just to see him. I remember that well because he was a friend of mine called Gary Fellows had come up from Stafford. Yeah. Uh, and they were all bodybuilders. And I don't drink, but they had me drinking that night. And uh, yeah, I did. I, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I remember it well. I remember it well. I don't think I ever did that again. No, I can remember it. But, but what I'm going to say about that Chesterfield show, whenever, whatever show you went to, you always got, um, we used to call them lap men then. Do you remember them ones that walked around? Oh, yes. Yeah, and, uh, carpet carriers. Guys that always thought they were huge, didn't they? Pacing. And you came in, and it, it's weird what you remember, I know, but I can still remember you coming in, and you waved over, because I said, with two seats. And you had, you probably won't remember this, you had, you had a pair of jeans on, right? Because am I correct? Didn't you used to still be able to buy jeans from normal shops at one point, even though your legs were ridiculous? I used, not from England, I could buy them in America. Yeah, from yeah, there, there was a type of jeans called Cavariches. Yeah. They were like pleated at the top and they were like baggy. Yeah. They went down into a narrow thing. And well, they, were, they were really trendy at the time, so I could wear them. You had a pair of jeans on. Right, I'll never forget. You had a T-shirt on, which you didn't always wear. You used to wear cover up quite a bit, didn't you? Didn't yeah, you? I did. But you had a long sleeve T-shirt to it. But you had a waistcoat on. <laughs> and I'm not joking. You walked in, and I've never seen so many guys sit down so fast. <laughs> <laughs> and you came in, and they just must have thought, "Holy shit, <laughs> get out of his way!" They came in, but I'll never forget that. And I remember you came and sat with us, and it were. It may have been my very first time that I saw Dorian, yes, pose. Oh, I remember that show. Yeah. I remember uh, that show, yeah. Came on and they were all smoke and all that. Yeah. Uh, it looks, it, I remember you saying it looks absolutely incredible. I remember. Not right after he won his first Olympia? It could have been, mate. It could have been. It yeah, looked, I, I, know, I, rem I remember that well. I remember that, that really well. Because um, he kind of set the bar, didn't he? Yeah, you know, yeah but definitely set the bar for everybody else. Just funny what you remember. I remember you just coming in and everybody just, it were like there were 30 blokes and then suddenly they were all gone. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you know the silly thing is, though, even back then, I, you, you never think you're big, do you? Oh, no matter what way you get to, you never do, do you? Yeah, I never thought, I, I always thought I was small. Yeah. And, uh, I always stayed, I always tried to stay covered up. I very rarely wore. Skin tight T-shirts are all, you know. In, in, in the in the gym, I would. But yeah. once I got really sweaty, I'd strip off. But um, I, I didn't like, I didn't like the lap men, as you call them, carpet yeah. carriers. I didn't like that. Well, loads of them, weren't there? Oh but, yeah, I mean, I, I, I there probably still is today. Two and three pairs of joggers on because they didn't. Turn, yeah. So it looked like they had big legs <laughs> and stuff. I like, I didn't... Remember, they used to wear those, those big heavy knit jumpers were in fashion. Yeah, mate, and yeah. they'd wear like three of them. Yeah. And then put jeans on with a belt and tie them all into a belt to look really big and then carry the cooler. They used to train in them though. Oh, I know. You know, know. jumpers. I can still remember like at bodies in Leeds and stuff with big jumpers and they were pouring with sweat. And I used to think, oh, Jesus Christ. Kappa, was... remember Kappa? He always used yeah. to train with a yellow jumper on. He wore the same yellow jumper for about six years. <laughs> I do remember that. <laughs> Tight yeah. bastard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, bloody Kappa. Yeah, that's unbelievable. Well, listen, mate, we probably took up enough of your time. Well, thank um, you for having me, mate. It's been a mate, pleasure. It's been uh, unbelievable. Thank you so much. It really has been an absolute... And do you know what? We're going we're gonna to plan one at some point, if we can, where we have about three or four people on at once. Absolutely. So, yeah, definitely. If we do that, mate, we'd absolutely love you to be one of them. Definitely, bud. I'm all in. Just oh, let me know when. Brilliant. I just want to say thank you so much, and please look after yourself, won't you? I will, mate. Trust me. All right. Uh, We'll talk you've got soon. a new lifestyle going on. Yeah, you do right, mate, as well. <laughs> All right, thank you Thanks so much. Thanks for having me. Good talking to you, bud. Cheers, Ian. Right. Cheers, Cheers. Cheers.